It was here in Mecca where our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was visited by the Archangel Gabriel. Muhammad وسلم, was flown from his house in Mecca to Jerusalem, mounted on Al Buraq, which traveled at speeds of light. When he arrived in Jerusalem, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, led the previous prophets in prayer at Masjid al Aqsa. Afterwards, ascending to the heavens, it was there that the prayer was established and made compulsory. Still today, the nation of Muhammad وسلم, hear and answer the call to prayer. A way to thank, praise, and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sound of the Adhan is heard throughout the world. Muslims stop and turn to their Lord, thanking Him, remembering Him, and bowing down to Him in prayer. Whether you are waking up to hear the call of Fajr prayer in London, or stepping out for Dahar prayer in Malaysia, praying Asr here in Turkey, observing sunset as Maghrib approaches in Paris, or even praying Isha, harborside in Sydney, Muslims from all over the globe come together in unison, turning towards the most holiest city on earth, Mecca, and answer the call to prayer five times per day. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to my prayer project. Salah is the most important pillar of Islam after the two shahada. After saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. The aim of this project is to introduce salah to those who don't know how to pray at all, for beginners or for those who have some idea or for those who want to perfect their prayer. So, insha'Allah ta'ala, God willing, we will explore the basics of the salah not going into the intricate details and leaving the intricate details for upcoming lectures. So please join me as we explore the salah in light of the hadith, in light of the prophetic words, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me pray. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een All praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon all those who follow his guidance until the last day. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Salah is the backbone of this religion, of this deen. And Allah commands us to pray in the Qur'an. Allah wants from us to worship Him. This is why we exist on this earth. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have created not the jinn or mankind except to worship Him. And what better act of worship than the act of worship of prayer, of salah. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, indicated that salah is one of the five pillars of Islam. The first one being the shahada, the declaration of faith. And then directly after this phrase, we have a salah. And then of course we have zakah and fasting or psalm and the hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. Let us now go back 1400 years ago and look at how the salah was commanded. Because when we look at this history, when we look at the background of the salah, we are going to realize how important salah is. Let's visit the tail end of the story of Al-Isra' wal-Mi'raj, the night journey. This is the journey 
whereby the Prophet was accompanied by the angel Jibril, angel Gabriel, and he ascends through the heavens. And when he gets to the sixth heaven, it is at this point he greets Prophet Musa, Moses. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And then he ascends to the seventh heaven. And it is at this point that Allah reveals to Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The prayer, the salah. He commands him to pray 50 prayers. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must come back to his people and advise them that they have been commanded to pray 50 times a day, in the day, and in the night. So he comes back down and he meets Musa again at the sixth heaven. And Musa asks him, he says to him, what has Allah commanded you? And he says, 50 prayers in the day and night. So he says, go back. Go back and ask Allah to reduce it. For verily, I have tried with the children of Israel. I have tried with Banu Israel. Your people will not be able to handle this. So he goes back and he requests from Allah to reduce the number. And it is reduced by 10. But when he meets Musa again, Musa says, no, go back. And he goes back and the number is reduced again and again until it is reduced to five. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are five prayers every day. They are five prayers every day, each being rewarded as ten. So that makes fifty times or fifty times of prayer a day. And so even Musa at this point when he hears about the five prayers, when Musa finds out, he says, go back. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, he says, I have asked Allah to reduce it so much that I am now too shy to ask him to reduce it any, any further. And so the Prophet accepts what Allah has commanded. And he comes back down with this command to pray five times a day. But remember, that for each prayer, it is equivalent to ten prayers. So in essence, when you do pray five times a day, you are being rewarded as if having prayed fifty prayers a day. The night journey teaches us many lessons. Not only does it teach us how salah was legislated, but also we learn that about the importance of the salah. You see, the other acts of worship, whether they are zakah or the fasting of the month of Ramadan or pilgrimage to Mecca or any other act of worship that Allah legislated, He legislated them on this earth. Whereas salah was legislated in the heavens. Also, the other acts of worship were legislated through a mediator and that is through the angel Jibril. However, this is not the case with Salah. Salah was legislated between Allah and between Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without a middle person. Salah is the first act of worship that was legislated before any other act of worship. And it was legislated during the period of Mecca and every other act of worship was not legislated until after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Medina. Let's talk about the prerequisites of Salah. That is, what you must do before commencing Salah. There are six things that you need to keep in mind. Let's begin. The first prerequisite is ensuring that you are covered properly. For the males, this means covering from your navel, that is your belly button, to the knees. Also ensure that your shoulders are covered. For the females, this means that the entire body is covered with the exception 
of the face and the hands up to the wrists. The second prerequisite is ensuring that the body, the clothing, and the place of prayer are free from impurities. The third prerequisite is to ensure that you are in a state of purification, such as wudu, ablution. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said that salah, that prayer, is not accepted without purification. The fourth prerequisite is ensuring that the time for prayer has started. Allah says, Verily the prayer has been ordained or enjoined upon the believers at fixed times. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, indicated that the most beloved of actions to Allah is prayer at its fixed time. The fifth prerequisite is to face the Qibla, that is, the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca. This means that wherever you are in the world, you must ensure that you are facing towards Mecca. The sixth and final prerequisite applies to when you are praying alone and in an open area. That is, to pray with a partition in front of you, known as the Sutra. Let's begin to perform wudu. It is important that you perform the following steps of wudu in order. Step 1. Begin in the name of Allah by saying, Bismillah. Step 2. Completely wash the hands, including the wrists and between the fingers, three times. Step 3. Put water into your mouth using the right hand. Swirl it around in your mouth, then expel. Do this three times. Step 4. Sniff water into the nostrils as far as possible with the right hand and then blow it out using the left hand. Do this three times. Step 5. Washing the face from the forehead to the chin and from the left earlobe to the right earlobe, making sure the whole face is washed. Do this three times. The one who has a beard should also run the wet fingers through it. Step 6. Wash the right arm beginning at the fingertips, washing the entire hand and arm up to and including the elbow. Do this three times. The same is done for the left arm beginning at the fingertips, washing the entire hand and arm up to and including the elbow. Do this three times. Step 7. Starting at the fringe, moving the hands to the back of the hairline and then back to the fringe all in one movement. This is done once only. Step 8. Wipe the insides of both ears with the index fingers and the back of the ears with the thumbs. This is done only once. Step 9. Wash the right foot including the ankle. Make sure between the toes are also washed using the small pinky finger. Do this three times. The same is done for the left foot, washing it up to and including the ankle, ensuring you wash between the toes using the small pinky finger. Do this three times. Step 10. It is preferred to seal your wudu with a declaration of faith, saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. This means, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. You may also add to this saying, Allahumma ja'alni mina tawwabeen. وَجْعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ Which means, O oh Allah, make me among those who turn in repentance to you 
and make me among those who purify themselves. Upon the completion of the steps of wudu, one is now ready to pray as long as they don't nullify the wudu. Actions that nullify wudu. This includes passing urine or feces, passing wind. Other things that nullify wudu include deep sleep, whereby one loses awareness, unconsciousness or intoxication, touching the private parts with the hand and fingers without a barrier, intimate relations between husband and wife. If a person forgets whether they have nullified their wudu or not, then this does not nullify their ablution, regardless of whether the person is praying or not, until they are certain that they have nullified their ablution. Don't forget that you must perform the steps of wudu in order. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Now we are going to look at, insha'Allah ta'ala, the steps of the salah in light of that prophetic hadith, pray as you have seen me praying. Now, the prayer consists of units, and these units are known as rak'at, the singular being rak'ah. And every salah has a number of units. So, the first prayer of the day, fajr, consists of two rak'at. The second prayer, the midday prayer, the dhuhr prayer, consists of four rak'at. The third prayer of the day, the asr prayer, consists of four rak'at. The maghrib prayer, that is the prayer after the sun sets, is three rak'at. And the final prayer of the day, the isha, consists of four rak'at. So now, let's begin to look at the steps of the salah and how to perform the salah as the Prophet wasallam taught us. Now let's begin. First of all, the person who is praying will begin by raising his hands up to his shoulders or in line with his ears. Whilst he is doing so, he says, Allahu Akbar. Next, he places his right hand over his left hand and he begins with the opening supplication of the prayer. Now the opening supplication is optional and this will be discussed in a further presentation. Now after he has completed the opening supplication he begins with the isti'adha and the isti'adha is saying A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim This is to be said at the beginning of the salah next he says the basmala and the basmala is saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now he will begin reciting Surah Al Fatiha. This is the opening surah of the Quran, the first chapter of the Quran. Surah Al Fatiha. And Surah Al Fatiha should be perfected. And you must ensure that you have a scholar or a teacher. Check your Surah Al-Fatiha because Surah Al-Fatiha is one of the pillars, it is one of the arkan, it is one of the main elements to Salah. So this is why it is important and the one praying will be saying this a minimum of 17 times in the day and night. Surah Al-Fatiha. Let's begin. So we said we start with the isti'adha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Then the basmala. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. And now we begin with the words of Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmanir rahim. Maliki yawmid deen. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Now after you say ولا الضالين, you say آمين. Next, after reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, you will recite a surah or a chapter or parts of a chapter from the Qur'an. So for example, let us take the 112th surah from the Qur'an, which is Surah Al-Ikhlas. So now that you've finished Al-Fatiha, you've said Ameen, now you are going to begin again with the Basmalah, with the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then the surah. So for example, we'll say, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Okay, now that you've completed your chapter as we just did with سورة الإخلاص you are now ready to go into the ركوع position that is the bowing position now what you need to do here is, as you are going down, first of all you are going to raise your arms. You are going to raise your arms in line with your shoulders or in line with your ears. And as you are doing so, you begin to say, Allahu Akbar, and you are now entering into the ruku', the bowing position. Now, in this position, you must ensure that your back is straight. So that if I was, for example, to place a cup of water on your back, you must ensure that no drops will be coming out of that cup. You must also ensure that you are gripping your knees. So not with the fingers all together, nor are they stretched out, but just a nice gripping of your knees. Now in this position, you are saying the words of remembrance related to this position, the ruku'a position. And they are Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Now you can say that a minimum of once. But it is preferable to say it more than once. And in many cases you will find yourself saying it three times. Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Now you are ready to go back up into the standing position. Coming up from the ruku' position, you will say, Sami Allahu liman hamidah, whilst raising your arms. Then you will follow this up by saying, Rabbana walakal hamd. So now you should be standing upright and with your arms by your side. Now you are ready to enter the sujood position, the prostration position. Now this is a very special position, so pay attention here. Now here, let's begin with the sujood position and by saying Allahu Akbar. And now you should be entering the sujood position. In the sujood position, you need to ensure that you are prostrating on seven bones as indicated by our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now these seven points are the forehead and the nose that constitutes one point, the palms of your two hands, your two knees and your two feet. Now with regards to your palms, the fingers must be together facing the Qibla. Now also what you need to keep in mind in this position is that your elbows must be off the ground and your arms away from your body. Now, with the feet, the feet must be upright with the toes facing the Qibla also, just as your fingers are facing. So now your whole body is in this very beautiful position, the sujood position, and this is the closest this is the closest time that you will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in this position, you will also now be reciting the words of remembrance related to this position of sujood, and that is, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Now the minimum is once, but you 
Most people, as we learn, say it three times. And if you say more, then this is permissible as well. Now that we have completed the sujood position, we will now raise from the sujood position. And as you are raising from the sujood position, you are saying, Allahu Akbar. In this position, you will have both the palms of your hands on your thighs while sitting on your left foot with your right foot upright, toes facing the qibla, the direction of prayer. In this position, you will also say, Rabbi ghfirli, Rabbi ghfirli. And now you are ready to enter the sujood position, the prostration position again, saying, Allahu Akbar. Now remember in this position to be prostrating on the seven bones and also now you're saying the dhikr Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la saying it once, three times or more. Now you will come back up saying Allahu Akbar into the standing position and this constitutes one rakah. Now we are ready for our second rakah, our second unit of prayer. Now here we begin with the Fatiha. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, recitation of Surah Al Fatiha, recitation of another surah or parts of a surah or chapter from the Quran. And then, once we have done that, we are ready to go into the Ruku' position. Remember, raising your arms, now entering into the Ruku' position, saying Allahu Akbar, and in the ruku' position, the bowing position, you are going to say Subhan Rabbi al azim once or three times or more. Now you are ready to come back up from the ruku' position and you do so of course saying Sami Allahu liman hamidah followed by Rabbana walak al hamd. Now you enter into the sujood position saying Allahu Akbar. And now you enter into this position and you are saying Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la once, three times or more. Then coming up from the sujood position saying Allahu Akbar. And now you will say Rabbi Ghfirli, Rabbi Ghfirli. And go back into the sujood position saying Allahu Akbar. And again Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la, once, three times or more. Coming back up now from the sujood position saying, Allahu Akbar. And now you should be sitting in the final position of a second unit prayer. Now here we begin with the words of remembrance of this position. And this is known as the tahiyyat or at tahiyyat And this is where you will say at tahiyyatu lillahi was salawatu wa tayyibatu assalamu alayka ayyuha an-nabiy wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alayna wa ala عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Assuming this is a two-unit prayer, or the final rak'ah, final unit of your prayer, whatever prayer that may be, you now continue to say the words of remembrance known as the Ibrahimiyyah. And the words of the Ibrahimiyyah are as follows. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Now we come to the completion of the prayer. 
Now, whilst turning the face to the right, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now, bringing the face back to the center and repeating this to the left, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And this completes your prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our prayers. Amen. We hope this DVD has given you the opportunity to learn and to develop your knowledge about Salah, the prayer, the second pillar of Islam. Remember that Salah is the link between you and the Creator. And remember that it is the first thing that you will be asked about on the Day of Judgment. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your prayers. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the strength, the energy and the zeal to worship him in the manner in which he loves best. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.